How's it going, guys? Um, today is going to be a special day because, first of all, I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. Today we reached 500 subscribers in this channel. And, you know, top uh, YouTubers have thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers, but we all start from somewhere, right? And for me, it's 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 amazing uh, that so much people are looking at my content and all the comments that I've had so far are so positive and so motivating. And that's the purpose of my YouTube channel is to motivate you in different ways. And my way is using mathematics. Um, so what I'm what we're gonna do today is I'm going to answer a question from Matt Ronicky. And this question, he sent me this question in November from last year. And it's it got stuck in my head and I, I've been pondering about it and and it, it really bothered me because he had a very valid question. And his question is about the minimum length of the crease. So on December of 2014, I uploaded a series of videos about it and it's about the letter size sheet of white paper 8.5 inches times 11 inches is folded in a way that corner A touches the opposite uh, 11 inch edge at point E. The folded portion C is called the crease. Find the minimum length of the crease. Okay, And the video is you know everything is valid on the video everything is true but his question was what is the real domain of the crease function in order to ensure that the crease does not overlap the paper when folded and in my videos n that question really is not answered and it bothered me because it's a very valid mathematical question right because it's fun to see the math behind it but if the application is not aligned, then it's pretty useless, right? Um, so today, I finally sat down, told myself, I'm going to solve this, right? And I actually did. It was very unique, the way I did it, and it makes sense. And I, I've, I, if you see my table right now, there's like millions of folded papers and trying to see which... Like, what's the maximum, what's the minimum, like, what's going on, right? And I finally got it, I found the exact value, and I'm gonna share that with you today. Now, there's also a concern for Chris Jones about my calculus part of the video, finding the derivative, which is part two, and he found a mistake on it. Instead of being, because I multiplied two by two and I wrote six, and you know, I apologize for that. It's it's pretty bad, you know, like two times two is not six, um, it's four, and it messes up the whole calculation. Um, but if you can forgive me, I, I'm sorry. I told him like, hey, you know, those were my first videos. I was pretty nervous about them. And, you know, trying to share content around the world for everybody to see, you're, you know, you're accountable for that. You know, you're accountable for your own mistakes and, here I am, you know, apologizing. So I hope you understand that, you know, I wasn't meant to, to make a mistake like that. Um, but again, the the concepts are all correct. So let me go ahead and start this video. So again, if you go back to the first video, the Pythagorean method, you're gonna see this paper and you know, you have points A and E. And in the video, there's more detail about it. but in that video, we have that y equals 8.5x divided by square root of 17x minus 72.25. And that's where I found the restriction of x being greater than 4.5, right? Because 17x uh, minus 72.25 has to be, cannot be uh, equal to zero. So therefore, x cannot be equal to 4.25, which is what uh, Matt sent me like, hey, you know, I get that, but there is like, there's a period after 4.25 where I can't find the crease either. 
and I was like so like mind blown like it's true like if you try to do that the paper overlaps like on the top the crease overlaps the top of the paper so how do we restrict that and I realized today that what I needed to restrict was that y has to be less than or equal to the total length right so that means that this has to be less than or equal to so 8.5x and the square root of this this has to be less or equal than 11 okay and that's the key that's like what I finally realized and I was so excited today yeah math gets me excited um, I was like yes that makes sense right it has to be less than or equal to 11 in order to the 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 that y value cannot exceed that because that's the, the maximum length of of y and so I want to see what x satisfies that right and so we do a little algebra right we divide by 8.5 on both sides and we have x square root 17x minus 72.25 less than or equal than I have the calculations right here somewhere um, 0 0.77 approximate okay these are all approximations we cross multiply right so x is less than or equal than 0 0.77 square root of 17x minus 72.25 we square on both sides so we have x squared oops what the heck happened here oh wrong 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 sorry Ooh. let me erase all of this why did I start it like this oh my god can't believe it okay let's go back now again sorry um, we cross multiply first so you got 8.5 x less than or equal than 11 times the square root 17 x minus 72.25 okay and then we divide by 11 and that's where I get the 0 0.77 x is a less than or equal to the square root 17 x minus 72 point 25 and then I square so this one becomes 0 0.6 again this is an approximation x squared less than or equal than 17 X minus 72 point 25 and then we move it to the right side so 0 less than or equal to negative 0 0.6 x squared plus 17 X minus 72.25 okay so what x satisfies that and in order to do that I use the calculator okay because these uh, decimals are like weird you, you don't you don't want to use the quadratic equation for this you could but I prefer the calculator um, so let me see let me let's turn this one on look so I plot in this into my y equals right in the sorry I'm, I'm a I'm sick today. Um, y equals negative 0.6x squared plus 17x minus 72.25. And I graph it. Okay. Is that, as you can tell, there is a positive side, which is where we want to be, right? Because if it's zero less than or equal than all of that, that means that we're looking for the values of x that are greater than, than zero, right? Which means it's positive. So if you do the second calc, and find the zeros the first zero so let's guess the right bound and boom there you have it that's your X 5.20 okay so let's put this into perspective so 0 has to be less than or equal than X minus 5.201 and then the other zero would be let me see so again second trace the other zero is not important but you know you always want to be mathematically consistent 
Oops. So left bound, and then the right bound. And the guess is 23.12. Okay, so the value of x, the smallest value of x that satisfies this inequality is 5.20. And this is huge because that's the real domain of my crease function. So what I mean by that is the following. The domain, and when I, when, like, re remember, this video is not the whole setup of the problem. I already have that video in there. Of, um, if you go back to those videos this is just a revision of what the domain is so the, the crease function if you look at the previous videos is the square root of 8.5 x squared or x cubed x cubed sorry uh, divided by let me see if I have it here somewhere huh. I forgot let me see Sorry, people. You know, I, I'm a hot mess right now. Um, it's, I think it's 2x minus 7.5. Let me see. I have it right here. You guys are seeing this right now. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Um, let me go to the last part. Okay, 2x minus 8.5. Okay, sorry. So 2x minus 8.5. Okay, and so the real domain, the real domain of this function is going to be from 5.20, less or equal than x, less or equal than 8.5, okay? That's the real solution. I mean, the domain of my function, of the crease function. So from 4.5 to 5.20, it's gonna overlap, so the crease is gonna go over the paper, okay? And so, in order to avoid that, we, our, our minimum x has to be 5.20, okay? Which is awesome. Again, um, this question was driving me crazy. I, I literally couldn't sleep, like, I wanted to solve it. I, I'm, I'm that type of guy that I, I'm too competitive and I need to see, like, the solution and, I, I was like brainstorming for what three months already we're, we're in March and this question was in November um, but I finally realized how to solve it and this is the real domain of my crease function and then another question was what are we looking for right it's the minimum length the smallest length of the crease now the the maximum length is I calculated that <laughs> um, is what well if X is 8.5 on the on the diagram again I'm oh, I'm relating this this video is just like a like a sub part of my first video okay this is not the entire problem like I'm not doing anything additional besides the fact that I'm finding the real domain but what what's cool is that you can, uh, if you go back to the video, the one that you just saw, you see that if X is 8.5, then Y is also X, uh, 8.5. And I'm gonna show you visually what that looks like. I have a paper here. So when X is 8.5, you're you're making basically a, a, a isosceles triangle, okay? So this is how it looks like, okay? You're making an isosceles triangle. And this crease, this crease can be calculated, right? Because we just have to apply the Pythagorean theorem. And so by doing that, I think I calculated, yeah, I did. Oh no, I calculated the, the, the length of the crease when it's 5.20. That's what I, that I calculated, I remember now. And that's gonna be the maximum length of the crease okay because it's the point when it the crease is right in the corner of the page 
okay and the maximum length is the following check it out i'm so excited i'm so pumped up um so if we do the pythagorean theorem you have 5.20 squared plus 11 squared which is the maximum size uh, length of the of y value that's going to be equal to decrease squared if you find this calculation you have that c is approximately 12.17 inches okay and i actually calculated using this ruler like i actually found that it's actually 12.17 okay so that's the maximum length of the crease before it starts overlapping and so the that's the maximum the minimum length of the crease the one that you find at the end in 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 the second part of the video uh, of the derivative is the that number that six point um thirty let me see if i have it somewhere here Oh, there it is. My bad. My bad. I got it. I got it. I'm serious. I, I have like 3 million papers. Um, it's the 0 0.375 squared. The y value for that is 9.016 squared. And when you find that crease, this is the ma minimum crease, right? When you find the minimum crease is approximately 11 point zero forty two inches okay that's the smallest crease that you're gonna have look at this okay those are the dimensions of the smallest crease so boom okay that's the smallest crease you're gonna have for a paper this size okay and so I was I was just mind blown uh, for make I was so excited for this video, um, and that's it. Okay, this is closing the chapter of the minimum length crease. Okay, I won't be able to make more videos about this because this is everything. Everything those loops that they were hanging out there are closed already. I found the minimum and the maximum. Okay, let me write that here. This one is the maximum, and this one is the minimum, okay? And so, again, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful, and I appreciate all the subscribers. I appreciate all the comments, and I appreciate all the questions. If you have more questions about this or anything else in my videos, please let me know because, as you can tell, I do value that. I want to know what you guys are thinking. I want to know uh, if there's things that I can help you with. So, hey, Matt, I hope you like this video. This is just for you and obviously for everybody else who's watching. But thanks for the, the, the question. I know we had like literally, I'm going to show you. Let me see if I can have that out there. Um, look, we 25 messages back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. They're like, hey, but I don't get it. Like. You, you said this and you said that and like I was I was driving myself crazy like this guy he's serious about this you know he wants to know and and I was like dang it I want to help him and so Matt thank you again for sending me the question and I hope it, it's clear now and have a great day man take care